Technology advanced an incredible amount from 2000 to 2010. Camera phones, digital music, Blu-ray discs, and of course, YouTube were all invented and developed in this decade. This rapid advancement in technology allowed the VFX industry to evolve quickly too. So here are the top nine VFX innovations of the noughties. Color grading isn't a new technique. Old analog systems were used to provide color continuity throughout the film or to change the environment of a scene. For example, filming a scene at midday and then altering the color grading to make it an evening scene. In the year 2000, the Coen brothers produced and directed the film Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Although it was filmed in the spring, the Coen brothers wanted a sepia-tinted autumnal look and feel to the movie. After several unsatisfactory attempts of achieving this physically using chemical processes, they opted to try it digitally. Cinesite digitized and color graded the entire film, thus making Oh Brother Where Art Thou the first film to be color graded entirely by digital means, and the pioneer for a technology that nowadays allows filmmakers to choose a reason, climate, time of day, era, and emotion for every scene they make. Water is an incredibly complex fluid and therefore very challenging for a VFX artist to simulate. You can treat it like particles, calculating each individual droplet. However, this isn't possible when simulating large bodies of water because the calculations would just be ridiculous. So when simulating large bodies of water, you treat them like a mesh, making it ripple, rise and fall, or ebb and flow. But this method doesn't work when a wave breaks or it's windy, because that is when you expect the water to act like particles and create droplets, spray or mist. In the year 2000 film The Perfect Storm, ILM found themselves facing the problem of creating a massive, aggressive, stormy ocean that had to integrate into the water from the live action shots. ILM approached the problem by first creating a simulation of the ocean that could be manipulated to create anything from rippling water to 100 feet waves. This body of water would become known as the bottom water. ILM then made crests of the waves, water droplets from splashes, mist and foam, or what they called the top water, using multiple particle systems. Even though nowadays fluid simulations are larger, more convincing, and vastly more complex, ILM's work amalgamating these techniques to create a hybrid simulation was very much the starting point of it all. The Lord of the Rings trilogy pushed the VFX envelope in many ways, but perhaps the biggest industry changer was the creation of Massive. Before Massive, crowds, armies, or just general agglomerations of people were either hired extras or CG assets with little or no detail and very little animation. However, for Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson wanted huge armies of soldiers, all fighting independently. To overcome this problem, Weta Digital created a software called Multiple Agent Simulation System in Virtual Environment, or Massive for short. This software allowed them to create a crowd of up to 70,000 agents and randomize their outfits, size, and proportions. Each agent could then be given up to 350 different actions they could do. These animations could be hand animated or motion capture. Each agent is then given what is essentially a digital brain that can analyze what the other agents are doing around it, what assets are close to it, how fast things are moving, and up to 8,000 different criteria to make a decision on how to react and therefore which animation to carry out. This meant that animators could select a starting point for their virtual army, point them in the right direction and just let them go. Each agent would then act and react almost completely differently as if it had been animated by hand. This crowd simulation software is so impressive that it has become an industry standard for crowd simulation and now even comes with pre-built agents that are ready to perform certain tasks.
Motion capture is a technique where an actor wears a motion capture suit that has tracking markers. Their performance is filmed by various different cameras in order to be able to triangulate the position of each marker on the suit. This motion data is then transferred to a CG puppet, which then moves exactly as the actor had. The Indian-American film Sinbad, Beyond the Veil of Mists, was the first feature-length movie to have been made primarily using motion capture technology, although it wasn't released worldwide. Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within, was the first widely released film to be made primarily using motion capture. The film didn't do very well at the box office, many claiming this was because its realistically human movements, coupled with its not quite human aesthetic, gave it a creepy feeling viewers couldn't empathise with. This may be so, and the film may be to blame for the demise of Square Pictures, but Square Pictures did manage to pave the way for the future, providing motion capture as a valid solution and a valuable tool. In the early 2000s, motion capture wasn't particularly advanced. They could track body movements and translate them to a CG puppet, but hand movements and facial expressions couldn't be tracked so easily. This was a problem for the Wachowski sisters, who had planned a scene where 100 Agent Smiths fight with Neo. They could create a virtual camera to mimic the bullet time movement, and they could create 100 CG Agent Smiths to fight a CG Neo in a CG environment, but they couldn't create exact replicas of the actor's face. ESC Entertainment solved this by developing a technique called Universal Capture. Firstly, they took a 3D cyberscan model of the actor with a neutral expression. Then, using five strategically placed cameras, they captured HD images of the actor's face. Then, by using optical flow, they tracked each individual pixel over time and each camera view. They could then use the reference image and the position of each camera to triangulate 3D space and calculate the exact 3D motion of every pixel from every angle, and this could then be applied to their 3D CG model. This technique has served as both inspiration and as a foundation for multiple modern techniques. Among them, the de-aging technique Industrial Light and Magic used on the Irishman. In 2004, Warner Bros. released The Polar Express. The film had a 100% digital cast almost completely animated by using motion capture. This was made possible by Sony Pictures Imageworks, and the first time painted marker motion tracking was used on a full-length feature film. Here, dots are painted on the actor's face in key positions in order to capture their performance and emotions. This movement data can then be transferred to a 3D CD model. This method enables the character of the film to be anatomically different from the actor and yet still carry the actor's expressions and nuances. This creates an automatic empathy and familiarity between the audience and the digital character and offshoots like this technique, for example captive motion, are still used today. The technique of chroma keying, which is using a blue or green screen to layer one plate of the actor's performance over a secondary plate of a set or background, isn't new. It's been around since the 1930s. But the technique of creating digital matte paintings or artificial environments for the background plate, or what is known as a digital backlot, is a lot more modern. Digital backlots only started to become popular once we had the technology to make them credible. Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow was the first film to have one 100% digitally created backgrounds. Kerry Conran spent four years creating a short black and white trailer using a blue screen set up in his living room and his Macintosh computer. This trailer convinced John Avnet and together they wrote a screenplay. The film didn't show us a particularly good story, it was criticised and didn't do well at the box office, and it didn't show us that anyone can make a film with just a camera, a blue screen and a PC, despite many journalists claiming it did, but what it did show us is that the digital backdrop was now an incredible tool at the VFX artist's disposal and could not only be used to create a cinematic environment that would otherwise be impossible, but it could also create a cinematic style and emotion too. The
The second and third Pirates of the Caribbean films required the whole of the Davy Jones crew to be CG monsters. However, the problem was that these CG monsters also had to interact with normal actors, so ILM decided it needed to use motion capture. But this also proved problematical. The main problems motion capture had was that it either had to be done completely separate to the principal photography, or a long time had to be spent on set rigging up cameras and lighting. So the R&D development at ILM came up with iMocap, a new game-changing motion capture method. To solve the problem of camera setup, ILM created a three-camera rig. This central camera would be filming the actor's performance and the background plate, and the two side cameras would be filming the dots, which could then be triangulated and that data used on the CG puppet. Another problem they solved was that traditional mocap suits had little balls on them. Essentially, this only gave you data on how the actor's skeleton moved, and therefore, you could only create a CG stick puppet. The iMocap suit uses iMocap bands. These bands have multiple dots all around them at known distances. The movement data from these bands gives you a mesh exoskeleton of the actor. The CG puppet must then cover this exoskeleton so that when it's match moved onto the background plate, it covers the actor's original performance. On the 2009 film Avatar, lead VFX house Weta Digital basically took every VFX innovation in our list and one-upped it. Digital backlots, motion capture and simulations all had to evolve to create this masterpiece. One of the reasons this was a box office hit was that we could empathise with the characters and this was because we could recognise them and their human traits. This was made possible by capturing every nuance of the actor's facial performance and then transferring that data onto their CG puppet. Or in this case, Avatar. Weta made special tight-fitting helmets made from latex casts for each actor. On these helmets, they mounted a camera and LED light to capture the actor's facial performance. This enabled the actors to move around freely on set so their physical motion could be captured, and at the same time, their facial performance was too. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video, don't forget the links to the music used in this video are in the video description, and big thanks to you for making it to the end of this video. Let us know in the comments if you did.